Q106.7 weather. Here's your KQNK forecast. Mainly clear skies develop with fog in spots early today with a slight chance for storms. Highs level off around 88, winds out of the west 5 to 10 miles per hour. Mainly clear skies tonight, slight chance for storms, lows level off around 64. Slight chance for storms tomorrow, highs level off around 89, mainly sunny skies. From the Weatherology Weather Center, I'm staff meteorologist Laura Lockwood. Right now, it's 67 degrees. Kansas Information Network News. I'm Jen Austin. Some Kansas residents woke up early Tuesday morning to rumbles of thunder, heavy rain, and flooded roads. Julio Flores has more. Area flood warnings were issued for Lyon County in portions of Chase, Marion, McPherson, and Ellsworth counties. Flash flood warnings were later issued for portions of Lyon County, including Emporia and Coffee in Osage counties. Downtown Emporia had received 4.95 inches of rain. As of 8.25 a.m. yesterday, the airport recorded about two inches. I'm Lou Flores. Some common scams are making the rounds again in Kansas. Social media users create posts on local buy and sell pages about missing children, older adults, or pets that aren't actually missing. They may also promote rental properties or land sales. The Sedan Police Department is warning the public about the common scams that have recently reappeared. They encourage you to thoroughly research people and companies before making a transaction. There's also more on the Better Business Bureau website. This is Kansas Information Network News. What is dedication? The thing that drives me every day as a dad is Dariana. We call him uh, Day Day for short. Every day he's hungry for something whether it's attention, affection, knowledge. And there's this huge responsibility in making sure that when he's no longer under my wing, that he's a good person. I think the advice I would give is you don't need to know all the answers. The craziest thing was believing that your dad knew everything. So as a dad, you felt like you had to know everything. You had to get everything right. It's okay to make mistakes as long as it's coming from love then, you know, it kind of starts to work itself out. I want him to be able to sit back one day and go, we worked together, we did a good job. That's dedication. Find out more at fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Good morning, I'm Natalie Hadley with your KQNK News. Brought to you by Firebolt Ag, LLC, serving all of your chemical and fertilizer needs. According to Hayes Police Chief Don Schleiber, on Sunday night, 33-year-old Tyler James Goodwin of Derby allegedly stole a truck from Walmart that was pulling a trailer. At 10.27 p.m., dispatch received a 911 call from a woman inside the box trailer who had been sleeping and woke up to find the trailer moving. Ellis County Deputy Tanner Dixon spotted the 2002 white Ford F-250 and trailer and initiated a pursuit as it traveled eastbound on Interstate 70, speeding to Russell County and through Gorham. Schleiber said the pursuit lasted about 30 minutes and Goodwin reached the speeds of around 80 miles per hour with it ending in rural Russell County near a set of train tracks and Goodwin was arrested without further incident. The woman sustained minor injuries and was transported to Russell Regional Hospital where she was released later that night. Goodwin faces several pending charges, including aggravated burglary, aggravated battery, theft of property, fleeing or attempting to elude, possession of methamphetamine, and possession of a firearm. He was booked into the Ellis County Jail on Monday morning. Schleiber said he appreciates Deputy Dixon, the Ellis County Sheriff's Office, the Russell County Sheriff's Office, and the Kansas Highway Patrol for their involvement in the chase. The state of Kansas ended July 2024 with total tax collections of $660.3 million, $6.4 million or 1% below the estimate, with total tax collections down 3% from July 2023. Individual income tax collections were $308.5 million, $8.5 million or 2.8% above the estimate and down 1.7% from July 2023. Corporate income tax collections were $34.3 million, $15.7 million or 31.4% below the estimate and down 23.3% from July of last year. Combined retail sales and compensating use tax receipts were $305.1 million, $4.1 million above the estimate and down $10.1 million from last year. And retail sales tax receipts were 3.7% less than the July 2023 collections. 
An annual report on crime in Kansas shows property crime rising and a decline in violent crime, providing benchmarks that may guide law enforcement and community leaders. The Kansas Bureau of Investigation's Crime Index Report, which summarizes crime data submitted by law enforcement agencies from across the state, shows property crime increased by 2.6 percent, with the number of reported property crimes up to 66,782 cases, and violent crime decreased by 3.7 percent from 2022 to 2023. The report said the overall crime index was heavily impacted by the uptick in property crimes, increasing from 2. percent from 26.7 offenses per 1,000 people in 2022 to 27 offenses per 1,000 people in 2023. However, the property crime rate was 10% below the 10-year average. The report said property offenses have steadily declined in recent years, making 2023 the first year since 2017 that the state experienced an uptick in property crime reports, though property crime offenses are assumed to be underreported to law enforcement. The crime that saw the largest individual increase was motor vehicle theft, which was up 4.8 percent. Law enforcement agencies recorded 13,294 violent crimes throughout the state. The violent crime rate was nearly 10 percent above the 10-year average, and the number of reported rape cases decreased by 12.6 percent, or 161 cases from 2022 to 2023. Although crime stats compiled by the Kansas Bureau of Investigation can be helpful for identifying trends, the Kansas Bureau of Investigation said in a news release that often it isn't possible to draw further interpretations or conclusions from the data as it's dependent on the victims reporting the crimes. In Nebraska news, 33-year-old Andy Eikhoff of Albion has been sentenced in a Phelps County court after being convicted of motor vehicle homicide and careless driving, which are both misdemeanors. The crash happened on March 28, 2023, where Eikhoff was driving a 2022 Peterbilt tractor semi-trailer on Highway 183 near 737 Road when it collided with the northbound 2000 Chevrolet Suburban. The driver of the Suburban was slowing and waiting for southbound traffic to clear before turning westbound onto 737 Road when the Suburban was rear-ended by Eikhoff. Court records say the crash caused the Suburban to go into the southbound lane and collide with the 2002 Chevrolet Silverado pickup driven by 50-year-old Lawrence Johnson of Holdridge. The driver of the Suburban was transported to Phelps Memorial Hospital in Holdridge and later life-flighted to CHI Health Good Samaritan in Kearney. Johnson, the driver of the pickup, was also taken to Phelps Memorial where he was pronounced deceased. Eikhoff has been sentenced to 48 days in jail with one day credit for time served, and 30 of those days can be waived at the recommendation of probation. After serving his jail time, he was also sentenced to two years of probation. The Nebraska Secretary of State announced on Tuesday that the Paid Sick Leave Initiative petition has been certified for the November 5th general election ballot. The petition gathered more than 97,557 valid signatures from Nebraska voters statewide, exceeding the required 7% threshold, and organizers collected valid signatures from at least 5% of registered voters in 47 counties. The Elections Division instructed county election offices to halt signature verification once the number of valid signatures reached 110% of the required amount, as stipulated by Nebraska, Nebraska statute. The Secretary of State's office also noted that it received three affidavits from individuals requesting their names be removed from the petition. The initiative would establish a minimum requirement for paid sick leave, allowing workers in Nebraska to earn and use sick time without retaliation. For businesses with fewer than 20 employees, workers could earn up to 40 hours of paid sick time, and for businesses with 20 or more employees, workers could earn up to 56 hours. I'll be back with more in just a moment. Firebolt Ag is a full-service fertilizer and chemical retailer. They customize products for individual farmers' needs, with the primary focus being customer profitability. Let Josh and Jack help you get the most out of your farm ground. They also provide in-house marketing with Ron Wall of Flatwater Solutions. Visit Ron in Phillipsburg or call Josh at 785-854-8484 or Jack at 308-840-2819. Firebolt Ag, your leader in agriculture. A 16-year-old boy was killed and a 24-year-old man badly burned in an electrical accident at the Great Bend Airport on Tuesday morning. The Barton County Sheriff's Office reported that the two were working for a roofing company on a hangar near the terminal building in a bucket on an aerial boom 
when they struck high voltage power lines. The 24-year-old got onto the roof and reached the ground. However, the 16-year-old was found unresponsive in the bucket. About 30 minutes after the accident, power was shut off and rescue personnel reached the 16-year-old. Both victims were taken to the hospital, where the 16-year-old, Ivan Joel Molins of Wichita, was pronounced dead. The Barton County Sheriff's Office is handling the investigation because the accident happened on city property and at a city building. A large collaborative, the K-State 105 Project, is bringing together 12 partners, including Kansas State University units, other higher education institutions, and health organizations to help improve rural and agriculture-connected health across the state. The Rural Ag Health Community Health Worker Project that has received funding and support through the K-State 105 initiative focuses on sustaining the health and safety of rural Kansans and the agricultural workforce. As the project is establishing resources and services hubs staffed by community health workers who are co-supervised by local K-State Research and Extension units and health care partners. Elaine Johannes, the Kansas Health Foundation Distinguished Professor in Community Health and State Extension Specialist, said local extension units participating in the Rural Ag Health Community Health Worker Project serve as a gateway to help rural residents manage chronic conditions, prevent injuries, and reduce risk of illness. She said extension units are known for providing education to promote and improve health, and now with the addition of community health workers, extension will be a resource and partner for local health care teams. The Community Health Care Worker Project will involve work in 16 counties and includes K-State units along with external and community partners. K-State 105 is Kansas State University's answer to the call for a comprehensive economic growth and advancement solution for Kansas and forges the connections and partnerships that create access to additional expertise within other state institutions and agencies, nonprofits, and organizations, all part of an effort to build additional capacities and strengths in each of the 105 counties in the state. Authorities in Sheridan County are warning businesses about a company that claims to be raising money for schools. The company, called Campus Box Media, emails businesses to ask if they would like to become an official sponsor for a local high school sports team, and they offer several packages with prices ranging from $1,170 up to $9,680, saying that it's to attach the business names and to merchandise ranging from t-shirts to rally towels. They say the merchandise would then be given away at local school sporting events, along with digital and online advertising for the business. However, according to numerous complaints received by the Better Business Bureau, no merchandise was ever delivered to the schools for distribution and the schools have no knowledge of the company. They appear to contact businesses across the county, country in smaller communities and the emails were recently sent to businesses in Hoxie. However, authorities warned that they could target other businesses in the state. Authorities said this is a strong reminder to always investigate any company before you buy and you can visit the Federal Trade Commission website at ftc.gov where they offer tips for small businesses on how to avoid being scammed. I'm Natalie Hadley. Your KQNK News was brought to you by Firebolt Ag, LLC, farmers helping farmers to succeed. You can contact Firebolt Ag today to get the most out of your farmland. Your KQNK weather forecast is being brought to you by Hinkle Termite and Pest Control, your Norton experts for all of your pest control needs. Your forecast for today, there is a slight chance of showers and thunderstorms between noon and 1 p.m. and areas of dense fog before 10 a.m. Otherwise, it's going to be mostly cloudy, then gradually becoming sunny with a high near 88 and a southeast wind around 5 miles per hour becoming northwest in the afternoon. The chance of precipitation today is 20%. For tonight, there's a slight chance of showers and thunderstorms before 3 a.m., then a slight chance of showers and thunderstorms after 4 a.m. Should be mostly clear tonight with the low around 64, and the chance of precipitation is 20%. On Thursday, there's a 10% chance of showers and thunderstorms before 7 a.m., otherwise it'll be sunny with the high near 89. And on Thursday night, mostly clear with the low around 60. I'll be back with the rest of your forecast in just a moment. When you got bugs, we know what a nuisance that can be. Lock them out. From Hinkle Termite and Pest Control, 
Lock Them Out is our very effective residential insect prevention program. We'll come to your place and treat your foundation plus all insect entryways. And while we're there, receive a free termite inspection. Call Mr. Rich Wenzel, our certified technician in Norton at 785-202-0167. That's 202-0167. Continuing with your weather forecast, on Friday, there's a 20% chance of showers and thunderstorms before 1 p.m. Otherwise, it'll be sunny with a high near 87. On Saturday, it should be sunny with a high near 92. On Sunday, sunny with a high near 92. On Monday, it should be mostly sunny with a high near 92. And on Tuesday, a 20% chance of showers and thunderstorms, otherwise sunny with a high near 93. Currently, with fog conditions, it is 68 degrees. The humidity is 94%. The wind speed is southeast at 8 miles per hour. The barometric pressure is 29.94. The dew point is 66 degrees. And the current visibility is just one quarter mile. Your weather was brought to you by Hinkle Termite and Pest Control right here in Norton. You can call Hinkle Termite and Pest Control at 785-202-0167 for all of your pest control needs. It is 8.17. It's time for Kansas Sports Report, brought to you by United Northwest Federal Credit Union, where everything they do, they do for you. Save more, earn more with the Easy Saver account at the United Northwest Federal Credit Union. Enrollment in this program automatically rounds up the amount of all debit card and share draft purchases made from your checking account to the next whole dollar and deposits into the Easy Saver savings account. Not only will this account help you save, but it also earns 2.01% APY monthly. Special terms and conditions apply. Come in today and open your Easy Saver account at the United Northwest Federal Credit Union, where everything we do, we do for you. NCUA insured. KIN Sports, I'm Spencer Dupuy. Chiefs rookie left tackle Kingsley Suamataia played the same amount of snaps as the other starters on offense on Saturday in the game against the Jaguars. And head coach Andy Reid liked what he saw. I thought he did a nice job in there. His feet, his sets were good. He was aggressive. I thought for, for the short time that he was in, he did a nice job. It was a good start for him. So we'll, um, you know, he's got to obviously build on it the more time he gets and so on. But um, I thought it was a... You know, it was a very productive start. Another player that got to play a bunch was Welsh rugby star Lewis Reese Zamet, and Reed was glad LRZ was able to see what an NFL game is like. It was exciting for him to have a chance to get in there and play. It's faster than what he's seen in practice, so I think it, from an ex- experience standpoint, it was great for him. I, I think that was a that was a positive, um, and then just build on it. The Chiefs' second preseason game is slated for Saturday at 3 p.m. against the Lions at Arrowhead. Kansas Information Network Sports. I'm Spencer Dupuy. Legends are made when a calculated risk pays off. I'm Clint Boyer, and as a professional NASCAR driver, I pushed the limits and made a living taking risks. But there's one risk that I never take, driving without a seatbelt. Life isn't a race, and there are no prizes for getting to the end first. Be a living legend for yourself and for those that you love. Buckle up every time. Brought to you by the Kansas Highway Patrol. I'm Cliff Boyer, and I'm proud to call the Speedway, Highways, and Backroads of Kansas my home. Racing is an intense, competitive job where legends are made and sometimes crash. Heck, I've even had my share of close calls. But there's one risk I'd never take. Without a question, I always wear my seatbelt. Be a living legend for yourself and those that you love. Buckle up every time. Brought to you by the Kansas Highway Patrol. It's true, many of us spend more time thinking about what's for dinner than preparing for retirement. But if you think your retirement needs deserve more attention, I agree, and I'd like to help. I'm Edward Jones Financial Advisor, Philip Eisenhagen. Together we can give your long-term retirement strategy the attention it deserves. Stop by our office at 418 East Holm here in Norton or call 877-3373. Edward Jones, Making Sense of Investing, member SIPC. 